to do in this film about at the beginning when saying well your nose isn't right and they're fixing up your nose and they're fixing up your eyebrows and in the end of course they make you up to look like yourself and it's both the makeup department in each case when you ever got to when you were when you were at MGM did they ever try and tamper with your face there
mistake she got me back to my natural self with a, an iron clad corset because I was I had baby fat and I was against all rules. <laughs> was it easy or difficult playing opposite James Mason in this film? Miss Gordon, that one in the trunk number was interpolated after Cuca finished the film. Uh, on whose suggestion was this? Because Cuca didn't direct the Born in the Trunk number. Yes, yes. I thought it was Leonard Gersh. No, he, he uh, and Roger Eaton wrote the song. Yes. And they were at MGM and they were going to do it with the number after this picture was finished. Uh, they wanted another number, and I think it lasted for four hours. Uh, George directed it. It was choreographed and uh, costumed by Irene Sherrill. Costumed, not choreographed by Irene And uh, he, of course he directed it. Do <laughs> you know something funny? Do you know that? I think we're I, getting, uh, I'm hoping to get to a kind of chic nightclub and I wind up in a kind of rotten place being uh, the peanut vendor uh, and a man walks by saying, sing melancholy right And that was Humphrey Bogart's voice because he wanted to he was on the set and he said, let me put this. <laughs> 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 so the man who did it, who you see on the street, was just a, a, an actor who had to pretend to be dark, but it was Bobby's boy. <laughs> Recently, uh, a lady casting, famous lady casting director, described us, you as a temperamental lady. How would you describe yourself as Garland? I said so. Recently, a famous lady. Some woman went on the radio the other night. Forget it. That you were difficult to work with. Nobody really cares about what you said anyway. <laughs> Work, as long as you keep working. <laughs> I don't even know that. <laughs> She's no well, she wanted to become known. That's probably why she said it. What's she wanted to become known. That's probably why she said it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there are those kind of people. <laughs> 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 And come up and help me for a
you should for some. Yeah. You said that uh, your, in your opinion, James Mason's performance is marvellous in this film. As a matter of fact, on this very stage, Mr. Mason said exactly the same thing about yours. Maybe a year ago, he was here. And that's very nice, and it was a, a, a mutual. <laughs> 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 obviously, well, he meant it anyway. That's very nice. Are you saying something for us? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Under contract, I can. <laughs> you come with us to the night of the end. Mr. Scott, how are you enjoying the book at town? I was at the opening night and thought it was marvellous. How did you feel the audience reacted to your film? Oh, wonderful. And how's it going since? singer now who's been more and more compared to Judy Garland as a praise for her and that's um, what's her name? <laughs> You're right but I no the, what's her name the other girl the one Barbara, Barbara Streisand no. <laughs> what do you think of her? She's marvelous she's marvelous you just can't deny the fact that she is a, a star, a, a, her, well, she's, she is a, a star, she makes a sound, she has a look, she, uh, and uh, no one will ever be able to really uh, deny the fact that Barbara's Streisand is very talented. There's no comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Between... You and her, you were first. <laughs> Uh, the happy days are here again. And it was 
being played on the radio and so forth. And then she opened at the uh, uh, Coconut Grove in Los Angeles. And I saw her, and I thought she was terrific. <coughs> and asked her to be a guest on my uh, 26, one of my 26 television shows. And suddenly, the man who was supposed to write or coordinate uh, the voice of music and make arrangements. I don't know how to read music in the first place. I can't read music or play the piano. I'm really hopeless. I suck. And I've been getting away with it. <laughs> <laughs> fellow, Mel Torme, the velvet smog, was <laughs> supposed to arrange all of the songs for whatever gets came on, and he was constantly fighting with his wife. And he left the day that Miss Streisand came in to start rehearsing. And I wasn't aware that he had left the you know, the good old TV. I was rehearsing with some dance team with Peter doing that all of Anyway, Bud B. Burke is So I wasn't aware that Barbara hadn't gotten any music written for her. She just, there was nothing for her to sing, you know, with me. And till the night before the shower, I, it got to me. And I thought, well, this is a terrible thing to do to a, a young woman on her first coast to coast national, what do you call it? National TV show. <laughs> and anyway, she, I, I was driving home by myself and I thought, I can't find Mel Torme and I can't read music, but she is famous right now for that one record, Happy Days Are Here Again. And I want to do a version of Harold Oliver's Get Happy. Uh, it is so uh, tempo. Silent Hawk alone, and there was a great big piano. I did. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the living room trying to figure out, and I'm sure I'm going to have to throw those in on you. It all worked out very well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Miss Darling, Very nice. Miss Darling, I don't know if you were up at five o'clock this morning, but I'd just like you to know that on the BBC World Service this morning, there was a wonderful tribute to you at five a.m. <laughs> No, from Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> Edinburgh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Edinburgh? Was it BBC? The BBC. Which one? Why not you? <laughs> <laughs> it was the World Service, uh, another BBC. <laughs> 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 Well, let's get a rerun. <laughs> <laughs> Who owns it? <laughs> <laughs> Who owns it? <laughs> Who owns it? <laughs> Who owns it? <laughs> Who owns it? 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 Who Visitors would be on the set. He would just refuse to go uh, on, you know, into the set, and he'd send me to get rid of. <laughs> 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 I, I sort of blood stained runner. I don't mind it because he was so nice. I danced pretty well. <laughs> Is that film a favorite of yours? What? Is Easter Parade a favorite of yours? It's one of them. I think it's a charming picture. Yes, I think it is. That's Chuck Walters, uh, one of his first uh, attempts at, at directing this complete picture.
Which is your favorite uh, film that you've made? This one. This one. Why did you get your Oscar for it? I don't know. Why did it call Grace Kelly? <laughs>